Hello, everyone. Uh, Hello. There's 36 people here. Um, my name is Tanya. I'm a junior. Um, I'm the research director for this club, and this club is called Speaker Series India at Berkeley. Uh, this event is co-sponsored by the Department of Theatre, Dance and Performance Studies and the Institution of South Asia Studies. Um, and for the structure of the event, just to get logistics out of the way, um, I'm going to do an introduction. We're going to talk to Shashank for like most of the hour. We're going to leave time at the end for audience questions. And that is that. So, yeah. Sounds good. Well, okay. Thank you for having me. Yay. Okay. I'm going to introduce, okay, I'm going to introduce Shashank. I'm going to introduce you. Okay. So, Shashank Arora is an Indian actor and a musician originally from New Delhi. He's played roles in movies like Brahman Naman, Muthun, Made in Heaven, and Titli. He's the only Indian actor to have had two films compete at Cannes, Sundance, Berlin, Toronto, and Locarno. Did I pronounce Locarno Film Festival? Locarno. And Locarno. And was also a guest lecturer at Whistling Woods International. Um, he's an actor that I deeply respect, not only for his stellar performances on screen, but for the person he is outside of the screen. Um, I personally, just through watching your interviews, I sort of walk through life picking up traits from people and there's a lot of traits that I would like to emulate from you in my life so that is that and it is my deep honor and pleasure to talk to you so with that being said hi Shashank how are you? Hi. thank you for having me here speaker series hi hi Vishnu all of you in uh, Chikanch and thank you for the invite and thank you I get to talk to you guys and, uh, thank you for the kind words uh, hopefully I will let you try Yes. Okay. So I'll just start with questions. We'll dive straight in. We're going to go sort of chronologically. So we're going to take you back right now in 1990s Gurgaon. Um, and Anji. And the question is, how do we picture like a young Shashank Arora? How, what were you like as a kid? Uh, were you shy? Were you extroverted? Were you a topper? Were you a backbencher? What is that? So I was always smiling at people. Uh, my mom was always telling me, not everyone's going to smile back. Um, when I was, I think I remember one of my first memories was smiling at random people into the cars and then feeling very sad when they never smiled back. And so that was me. I was always looking for validation uh, yeah. when I was, you know, I, I was always trying to sort of make sure things are happy and things are light. Um, I like music and I, I just love riding my bicycle around. Uh, as part of the theater society when I was very young. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I was just, you know, was happy being at home, eating kitchen and arranging boxes with my mother. Uh, yeah. That, that's, that's a bit about me. Yeah. And your dad is a graphic designer, also a poet. Your mom is a musician and a writer. Um, and you said in an in interview that there was a constant influx of this particular flavor of art, which you carried into your cinema. And I was just wondering what that flavor was. So my mom wasn't a musician. I don't know where but some journalist completely got that wrong with it. Okay. That, but she she does write. My dad is a graphic designer. And so they were often, I mean, they were watching good cinema. When I say good cinema, watching Iranian films, Abbas Kiristan, they were watching, you know, some American stuff and uh, some great independent Indian films, Marathi films and uh, Bangla films. And, and so I used to realize that this stuff often wasn't playing on TV. TV was playing different things and, and they would have these tapes and they would bring these, uh, uh, you know, VHS tapes and we'd watch cinema, which I wouldn't normally have access to. And I was like, what is this? This film is uh, TV beginning, I think. So it was good. So there was already a sort of uh, understanding that hey, there's more to the audio visual world than I'm being shown here on this television uh, or through this newspaper or through these cinema halls. Um, so this surrounded me with a lot of music from uh, the Beatles to uh, Elvis Presley when I was very young as well, and classical music, and Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan. And so I think a lot of that affected the person I became. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, was there like a particular moment where you realized that you wanted to spend a life in the arts or you wanted to become an actor? Or was there ever like, I want to be a doctor maybe? Well, I always wanted to be a scientist uh, when, when I was, you know, just a scientist, just joking, not physics. Not, I didn't have any idea about what science entailed when I was that small. 
uh, but I wanted to be a scientist because I thought it was cool. Hmm. And I loved doing little lab experiments, and I loved doing little things like that, which was the best part of my day. Uh, um, unfortunately, I didn't have the aptitude for chemistry, and I was good at physics, but I was terrible at chemistry. And uh, I had uh, a certain problem with uh, biology and my understanding of it, which changed many years later. Uh, and I started to love both biology more and chemistry more. Uh, but by that time, I'd already taken elected arts in my 10th grade, 11th grade, so I couldn't uh, uh, pursue physics, um, which I still want to do, um, which I still keep trying to do, like open university course in physics somewhere to get like a, you know, like a bachelor's. In, uh, you know. So I did want to, you know, uh, sort of be related or associated to science, but very early on I realized I was good at just sort of um, uh, speaking um, or I was good at sort of communicating with people and so that led to debates and in school that led to uh, music class and that led to me sort of uh, uh, you know doing plays from a young age and I still don't know if I want to be here uh, you know if this is all I want to do there's so much I want to do right? I want to be a sculptor, a sculptor and I want to uh, you know cook and I want to build houses and I want to run around and teach geography to people. And, uh, so this happens because they pay me for it and I love making art. And so it's just sort of come together. And, yeah. yeah. Um, but talking about just the being an actor and starting off initially, um, mm -hmm. we were wondering how did you get your first roles and if, if there are any aspiring actors in the crowd, what do you think is most important for them to get their start in the industry? Um, study, study acting. Um, acting is a science. Um, right now we're in the dark ages of acting, of studying. You know how in the 1600s or 1700s, uh, um, uh, if you wanted to study medicine, and I think when did Oxford open? I think 1800s or something, 1700s? Oxford University was 200 years old at least, right? And mm -hmm. so if you want to study medicine and you said, I want to go to Oxford and I want to study medicine, there was probably some parent somewhere who said, you don't have to go to Oxford to study medicine. You can go under the tree over there and understand how the local uh, uh, healer is teaching, you know, of the herbs and bathing the jharu. And so right now we're in that era of acting. We're in an era of acting where if you tell somebody, hey, I want to study acting, they're like, okay. You want to study, um, just you know, get on set, do, do a lot more acting, and that's unfortunate because uh, acting is the science of behavior, and there's a lot to be studied. Um, there is a lot, a lot to be studied um, in it, and uh, I hope, I hope, sort of, uh, whoever's coming into it realizes that there's a world of study to be done, and um, acting is fun, and acting is something that is a, a job which is a pleasure to do, you know, it's not um, a job which sucks your soul, uh, perhaps um, which would, you know, be say a desk office job being stuck. It's not, it's not like that, but it has its own traps, it has its own limitations, it has its own uh, uh, science and maths behind it. Um, so that's all I want to tell someone starting off. I got my first job uh, 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 four years after I reached Bombay. Uh, it took me a while. Uh, I sent auditions to about thousands of people. Uh, and then after I finished my acting studies is when I started getting the auditions because I had craft and I started understanding what my job was. Got it. Okay. Um, the act, the study of behavior sort of, I need a moment to process it. That's, yeah. Right. Um, but moving on, we're going to go to like some acting questions. And I wanted to ask you about preparing for roles. Um, and I guess the question is, can you walk us through your process of preparing for a role? Are you like reading books? And I guess this goes into the study of behavior thing. Like, are you reading books? Are you putting yourself into places where this character would probably be? Are you drawing on your own life experience? And then I have a follow-up, but I'll ask that later. No, that's a, I mean, that's a good question. Um, it's a very expansive answer, but mm. I'll sort of condense it as much as I can. Uh, acting, there's three areas of work. 
for an actor. Um, I'm not saying this, this is Stanislavski and Strasbourg and, and Meisner and the teachers who taught my teacher. Um, um, so there's instrument work, there's craft work. Instrument work is working on your body and your voice, uh, on your physicality. Uh, craft work is working on your emotions and your mind. And then there's research. So you were talking about research, reading books, uh, observing behavior, observing locations, societies, uh, political cultural states of a place that comes in research. Um, and then there's craft work, which is giving birth to the emotions of the character. And there's instrument work, which is giving birth to the physicality of the character. So you often divide your character into these three areas. You further divide craft work into your relationships with the objects in the film, your relationships with the locations in the film, your relationship, how do you feel about the objects in the film. And so that's craft work. And you work to create those relationships or that equation separately uh, through exercises, through very defined, uh, articulate ways. Um, and uh, you create the body language through instrument work through very articulate, defined ways. Um, so that's a bit how I work. I break the character down into its uh, basic components, which is any human being. Uh, uh, you know, me right now, um, you can break me down into 10 different ways from my voice, my posture, uh, to how I'm feeling, um, to what I'm thinking, to what the theme of the movie is, the theme of this subject, you know, the, I'm talking to, you know, uh, and so that's the theme. So you break down a film or a character into these elements, and then you create them step by step in a very sort of mathematical way. Um, and when you put them all together, you get the illusion of a human being. You get the illusion of a complex person, but it's not actually true because I have a light in front of me and I have a camera and I'm not going to stab my co-actor. I'm mm. not going to jump off a roof. I'm mm. not Superman. I'm not Titli. I'm not Brahman. I'm, I'm Shashan Karora and I'm an actor. And the highest consciousness level, I'm not going to stab my co-actor. I'm not going to, I'm not in love with them. I'm not. So you have to find within yourself, you'll never be a character, you never become a character. Any actor which tells you they become a character or they hide behind the character, that's false, that's wrong. Uh, that's, that's, that's not how behavior works, that's neurosis, that's madness. Because you can't be somebody else. You know you're you, uh, you know you're going to get a salary, you just had a breakup, you had to get to work at time. So you have to somehow within yourself find the parallel of your character. So if your character is uh, I'm just going to give a simple example of what method acting, which is a word which has been, uh, or, or uh, a term which has been misused for years and years and years um, because of how just information transmission works. When you transmit information, information gets warped. It's like Chinese whisper yeah. that you, you play this child. So that's how um, the, the teachings of acting worked as well, because there, there are very few people who, um, who sort of dissected the craft of acting, Stanislavski, Konstantin Stanislavski being one of them, the Russian uh, uh, director. He came up with this procedure uh, uh, of dissecting acting and uh, uh, he came up with a way which sort of um, would be accessible and usable like a science repetitively, shot after shot, play after play, a process like scientific, you know, like a scientific process which you can repeat and have similar results. Um, so he came up with that. Um, um, so the little example I was about to use to you is, uh, say I'm in a film and say uh, I'm playing a soldier um, and in my arms is dying my best friend, my other, the other soldier who's in the film with me um, and I have to cry. And that's the scene. The scene is that I have to cry. Uh, but I don't feel like crying because I'm not actually a soldier. Um, he's not actually my best friend. He's not actually dead. Um, I actually don't have that much love for my country. Um, so there's all these factors. So how do I create this? There, um, Stanislavski said, all you can do for that is say, use a handkerchief uh, which belonged to your grandmother if she died two years ago. Put that in your pocket and run your hand over its seam while you sincerely create your grandmother and you can cry for her loss. So what the audience sees is you crying for the soldier in your hand. But what you as an actor are using is creating a sense memory of your grandmother or your dog or the fact that you didn't get paid. You're finding the reality within yourself. So that is what method acting is. It's not getting into the skin of your character. It's to be aware of how you feel and to be honest about it. 
Hmm. So it's huh. trying to condense five, ten years worth of uh, explanation into that. Right. No, that was great. Um, I was just wondering, is there any one particular thing? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot, but like just one thing that really fascinated you when you were studying the study of behavior or like studying acting? It's completely how I could change the way I feel. Um, hmm. How um, you can honestly change um, everything externally, internally. Um, and that ends up changing how you think. And that helped me later with my mental health. Many, many years later, when I realized that mental health is something I hadn't dealt with my whole life, uh, because I wasn't aware of it till I was, you know, 21, 22, I wasn't aware of the problems that would come. And so the more, as I sort of grew older and I was weighed down with uh, uh, the world, you know, and the stresses of the world, I realized that this acting craft helped me deal with that because I was already equipped with the science and behavior. I could begin to understand what I was going through. And I think that was a revelation for me. Um, It really could help myself uh, because I was understanding what I was feeling. And it's very, very, very important. And very few people in this world actually are in touch with themselves. And I count myself lucky that acting pushes you towards being very self-aware. very sensitive and very vulnerable um, and perceptive. And if you do it honestly, if you do it not the right way is the wrong word to use, but if you do it honestly and if you try. So that's what I really, I really, really, really uh, admire about the craft of acting. Yeah, and just to understand, I read somewhere about like something about happiness, where if you're not happy, you do something Mm. that you would do if you were happy. And that changes something in your mind. Is that what you're saying? Um, that's you're talking about an external to internal. That's, that's yeah. Uh, so you're talking about yes, in a certain way. What I mean is, say, I can also do it the other way around. Um, hmm. um, you can also change how you're thinking of an object uh, when you learn how to create things sensorily, or when you learn how to create an object with your imagination with a certain set of questions. Uh, you realize that definitely the object, like you said, is affecting your feelings. So you can change how you feel with a cup of coffee and I'm having a nice cup of coffee and I feel relaxed because I have coffee in my hand. Um, But not always will this cup of coffee relax you. So then you have to find out what this coffee is doing. How is it affecting you? And when it's affecting you, oh, it's the warm feeling. Oh, it's the taste which reminds me of my dada's house because the coffee smells. Uh, I like feeling this rim, it's smooth. So you realize it's the texture relaxing you, you realize it's a smell. When you get into um, the details of it, you end up realizing that uh, these are actually your feelings which you are pressing buttons on. So you you start doing that the other way as well. Hmm. Not only outside to end, not only externals, but internal as well. Got it, okay. Um, and this is sort of building off of this, but it's sort of a separate question. Are you... You've done all these characters. Are you holding on to any characters as you sort of walk through life? Are there like certain traits from characters that you sort of embody in real life situations or is that not, you just let them go after you're done with them? As I was saying earlier, um, you don't become a character. You can never be a character, right? So all the characters were from me. So it's not like I carry them around, they are me. They were me, they're parts of me. Um, you know, Titli is a part of me which wants to run away. Ramanaman is a part of me which wants to be oppressive and be drunk and be uh, looking down at people because it fulfills my ego. Um, Salim is a part of me which wants to burn the world down. All these characters are parts of me. Kabir is a part of me which wants to make sense. Uh, Kabir from Made in Heaven. I'm sorry, I'm rushing through my characters like a pompous. Um, <laughs> no. but, um, um, so these are all characters all these characters came from me um so yes i do carry all of them all the time uh, and it's exhausting it's tiring but it's lots of fun because there's so much in a human being yeah yeah okay um switching gears a little bit so when you're working on a project as an actor um do you go 
in just autopilot with full faith in the director or do you try to get involved in the creative process and just the second one um is it sometimes difficult to follow instructions in case you feel the choices being made aren't appropriate for the movie or the message that it's trying to convey you constantly get loggerheads with uh, your director or your, your dp or your co-actors who are trying to build something and the instructions often don't make sense um but if you are equipped with the craft if you are equipped with your basic work as an actor um you know it's like if you're in a film it's like being on that rocket artemis on the way you know artemis has no people in it uh, on the way to the moon but if you're in a film you're in the middle of this highly stressful activity over there there will be several things you don't agree with several things you will have to agree with because it is your job as an actor to surrender to your director and so yes definitely there are there are points you don't agree but you have to find a bridge uh uh um and what was the first part of the question that you asked um it was do you try to get involved in the creative process do i try to get involved in the, of course yeah i mean that's why i'm hired um is to be a part of the creative process right um the only reason i do my job is because i bring something to it which x person can't and x person brings something to it which i can't and so there's no point of going in without your view or there's no point in not communicating what you feel because otherwise what are you doing there um, yeah. otherwise it's not a painting which you are helping make you're just holding the colors and so it's essential to throw your colors in and while you're throwing the colors someone will say no that's too yellow and you'll be like no i don't like the blue and they'll be like okay let's mix your yellow with my blue and let's come to you know so that's that's how cinema works cinema is the most collaborative medium uh by far by far when i say collaborative medium i mean it is on the level of landing someone on the moon because there is so much happening in a film there's dance there's sculpture there's design there's uh, performing arts there's uh, you know uh, the camera at play the sound at play all our senses articulate there's everything at play and it comes together to form a, a, a sort of a mise en scene of 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 life and right. so it's highly collaborative and there are lots of bridges you burn there's lots of arguments you have but you, you you like children with child like joy have to build something together and that's the fun of it yeah and the next question is sort of what you just said so you've said in the past that a scene is like poetry and you have to find the balance in phonetics and i read that and i was like what does that mean what what do you mean a scene is like poetry but i think you sort of just elaborated but if you have anything else to say it's like um, all of us talking right now that's like uh, abhishek mm. sitting there or it's like you know a uh, a uh, bhakti there and it's i say something you respond you hear your pen abhishek looked up a uh, a uh, bhakti looked down she smiled it's it's life is is like water and 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 so a moment when i say is like poetry means it has its rhythm a moment where people are angry has its own rhythm a moment where people are loving uh, a moment in life uh, where people are uh, uh, in sorrow grieving it has its own rhythm it has its own um uh how should i put a metronome to it life has certain rhythms to it and so a scene is much like a poem it is very much structured it is uh, sometimes lack of structure but it is um dependent on the rhythm of life and on breathing and so is poetry so that is why these are linked and so is music um and so is science and so is mathematics and it's hard to see how but it is um mm. uh, yeah. yeah okay and now we're switching we're just switching gears again but um the question is so in the terms of the roles that you're getting do you feel boxed in sort of in terms of the offers that you get and if you do how do you have you have you tried getting out of it or is that intentional or is that yeah yeah uh, i unfortunately have had to do a lot of work i would not normally want to do um, i do feel um this sense of the sense of uh, sadness sometimes or the sense of 
uh, wanting to do work of a different kind as well. Uh, I feel as though we, we, as human beings, categorize things out of a need for survival mm. uh, um, very, very fast. Um, and that happens then to actors as well, of course, because it happens to food as well. It happens to music as well. It happens to everyone, to politicians. It happens to everyone. You, you get categorized. And so that's death of an artist um, because you feel trapped or you feel like, hey, I'm only going to get work of a certain kind. But then you, through that experience, start realizing um, that there is so much to explore even in one particular box. Uh, when you've been boxed in into a particular, if you're, if you're an actor, you're boxed into comedies, or you're boxed into dramas. There is so much exploration or so many variations within that box to find because life is so diverse. People are so diverse. Events are so diverse that you, you sort of revel in that box. So yes, I do feel boxed in, but I feel like all of us get boxed in to a certain extent uh, because that's life. And that's how human beings understand things. They box things in. They box that, this, this, they box this, this, because that's how you compartmentalize and that's how you understand. And so, yes, that's happened to me. I feel a bit low about it. I feel uh, uh, like I, you know, I deserve a, more work. And, you know, I'm, I'm being completely honest. And so that affects you. But then you sort of try and, and, and make the most of the blessing that, you know, you already received. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, okay, and we, we talked a little bit about branding and before we started this conversation, but do, have you felt the pressure to build a brand for yourself in, in Bollywood? Um, I felt the pressure to keep, um, to sort of keep this business going. Um, mm. Brand is a word that producers and marketing people love using and, and, and artists hate. Um, why? Because it, it sort of uh, puts, puts a, a price in my head. Um, it's sort of, uh, it's a box, which I hate uh, because it, it sort of uh, puts a rate on you, puts a, you know, and, and, and it can hurt you uh, as a thinker uh, when you start thinking of yourself as a brand. If you're an artist, if you're, in, if you're a musician or a poet, and you start thinking of uh, how well you sell or why you sell, that's the death of creating. You'll make a lot of money. You make a lot of money if you think that way. Uh, a lot of people are very good at thinking that way, at building a brand, at, at making themselves a Coca-Cola or making themselves a, 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 a McDonald's. But unfortunately, um, that might not be the best for your mental health or your perception of yourself. Uh, also, that's very short-lived. Um, that feeling of uh, the sellability, everything is very transient. It's it's perhaps 10 and 20 years in, in an actor's life uh, where you do try and work yourself into a position like a brand so you can get lots of money. And that's basically why you do it, so you can get paid a lot. Uh, so I, I let the people who handle that do it, my agent, uh, uh, the producers, the marketing people, but I can't relate to myself in that way because then how will I write a story? If I take myself too seriously now, that's one of the worst things in this life is taking yourself too seriously. Yeah. And we all do it at some points. We're all taking ourselves so seriously all the time. It's our problems, how we think of the world. And we, we, we forget to let go because it's hard. It's hard not to take yourself seriously. It's very, 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 very hard. It's almost like Buddha level of, of, of enlightenment is to not, is to let go. You know what he used to say? And to let go of your need for validation, to let go of your need to success, let go of your need to be loved. Um, um, these are essential for an actor yeah. and essential for a human being by the end of it. And so uh, I try to tread this part and not think of myself as a brand. But that being said, the people who um, um, work with me, that is their dream. That is what they want. They want to see me as a brand. They want to see this as a functioning machinery. They want to get money. I need to get money. So it's at loggerheads. Yeah. That's all at loggerheads. And just to put myself in your shoes, when you're saying as an actor, you're taking yourself too seriously. 
is hmm. do you mean by worrying too much about the brand by by worrying too much about people's perception of you okay what is a brand a brand is essentially how to market your image right a brand is uh, how you feel you reach out to people or the image you feel you acquired from a certain set of work or uh, a brand is uh, something that looks to sell these are all the things that go with the word brand uh, um, um and, and sorry uh, what, what was the last thing you said the last thing i said was um putting myself in your shoes uh yeah. does this, like taking yourself too seriously as an actor mean that mm-hmm. you're thinking too much about the perception there's yeah essentially yeah right yeah, yeah. and is, you 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 can take acting seriously you can take mm-hmm. biochemistry very seriously political science very seriously but don't take yourself seriously as a politician okay this, when i say that it doesn't mean you are not dedicated to your job it's just that you don't prescribe a hierarchy you don't um you understand that you were a child who wanted to do this and you acquired a certain sense of behavior and feeling and thought along the way and to 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 chase that back to its root or to find how this this sort of germinated is what i mean is when you understand that you like every other child on this planet pursued something you loved and you got to a point where everything became so rigid and so uh a clear that you that you started taking this world to see this that you this became your reality and that's not the truth hmm. uh because i could be doing something else um i could be cooking i could be doing absolutely anything i want i could be you know cleaning a a, a mall and and so then that sense of taking myself seriously would 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 dissipate and become something else i would take myself seriously as as a chef and then I, so it's so transient you know and it's so boring it's the sun is rev- is like revolving around sagittarius a um they didn't teach me that when i was young they taught me the earth is going around the sun yeah. and so i understood that hey you know not like uh, galileo pre galileo where the earth is the center of the universe and we were like human beings and god is for us and we are the center of the universe um no we're revolving around the sun and no the sun is revolving around a black hole um and hey the milky way is revolving in lanike structure and hey lanike structure is moving you know how can you take yourself seriously you're just you know you're just you're just dust from from stars i mean like 5 billion year old dust which is assembled itself into complex structures molecules and amino acids these are amino acids which went from hot to cold cold to hot formed the string cell started going left to right and they acquired the illusion of complexity they mm. acquired the illusion of a complex system and this complex system has acquired the power for existential thought and now it's observing the universe and now it's having existential problems it's having problems why am i born of this universe because there's fucking hydrogen and there's helium and they came together and they they they, they bound mm-hmm. and it was so easy you know and so if you're well aware of so many things um which are essential to sort of find your place in this world you take yourself very seriously uh, very less seriously because you realize that you 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 are nothing no we are nothing right what do we i have 15000 days to live here more i we live for 30000 35000 days all of us let's put a number on that we never put numbers let's 30000 to 35000 days all of us will live that's not a lot of days um you know i i believe half my life 15000 saal bin bache hain 15000 days uh, left to go um how can i take this seriously how can i take uh, the legacy that i leave behind or what people think of me um, yeah. it's impossible and so that has to translate into everything we do all the time and if we are aware of that we will be humble if we are aware of that we will be empathetic towards each other we will not take ourselves seriously um, all these things they work together so yeah. yeah my my life is changing with the... anyways um so there's a okay here's a question and you mentioned it a little bit but i still wanted to ask it um i have a history professor who uh said that he loved history there was an initial childlike wonder that he had about history where you 
used to really love an activity and then he became a history professor and now he's teaching it and so now his he's earning a living off of his passion um mm. which is sort of killing it now um and i'm wondering do you feel the same way about acting after coming into the industry has your perception has your lens altered towards it or do you still have the initial passion and how do you like revamp it that's a good question yeah you have to revamp it every day hmm. the closer you get something to the, you know to something uh, the closer you see both its beauty and its uh, downfalls Mm. um definitely cinema is something the closer you get to it uh you realize that it can do both harm and both good to you as a human being uh, because it is a certain sense of neurosis is a certain sense of uh, uh your your being and putting on clothes and um i'm saying lines which aren't written by me uh, you know um and um, so i sorry again please just repeat the last thing you said i just keep yeah, trailing off in my head no the la- the last thing was has, has your lens altered towards the activity it's all good completely right yeah. it is like any activity like i'm saying you get closer to um, get altered and i i deal with that every day by reminding myself of why i liked doing this in the first place hmm. uh, which is essential i think in any field in any craft uh, you start taking it for granted after a certain period of time uh, the craft starts to take you for granted the surroundings as well it's a mixture and so every morning you have to invest yourself in it again every morning like mental health you have to relax yourself you have to uh, work on yourself and it's the same in cinema yeah it is similar and what is there any type of like art or media that you consume in order to sort of stay in awe of your career or if things that you avoid that you don't want to watch like instagram reels because you're going to lose brain cells or something or you want to watch specific movies or yeah um the art you consume will affect you of course if you're aware of how it is or if you're aware of its effect on you um um uh, uh, um perhaps perhaps then you can um watch all the instagram reels you want without them dumbing you down but they do um you know the moving image it has a profound effect on you as experiments conducted by all sorts of nefarious secret organizations in the world and government organizations where they see how a moving image can affect you how colors can affect you in the feeling and so definitely i'm aware there are certain things i shouldn't be watching but i do that anyway because they gratify me i get a sense of pleasure i get a dopamine release um and so i try to consume art which is meaningful uh but that is impossible as a whole to just keep doing and that's exhausting uh, as well um so as as an artist you must learn to observe everything uh, and just acknowledge its effect on you yeah yeah okay we're going to move on to a little bit like more reflection um but this is sort of a two part question one and you said you don't take yourself seriously but i still like there still has to be moments where because you're human there has to be moments where you feel like a failure because we all do um and so the question is what do you consider a failure in your career and mm. has there been a moment where you did feel like a failure how did you and how did you deal with it at the moment and how do you look back at it today sorry i threw so much at you but it's essentially like a failure question um so my what i think of as failure um, perhaps that definition might not include my work at all i don't mm. look at cinema uh, as something which i would feel like i'm trying to make a painting and sometimes that painting sucks and sometimes it's a good painting and if i made a terrible painting this mean i fail it means i try um and i'll try a better painting and i'll try something that fulfills uh, uh, me more 
my idea of failure is a life without love man uh, my idea of failure is going through this life and not not you know loving your mother or your lover or your father or your friends or or observing this universe which which is what you're created to do is sort of perceive this and to have the conflicts that come with perceiving this and to uh, empathize with every other living and non living uh, being and that's exhausting but that's fulfilling mm. yeah. it's very fulfilling it's very 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 you know just to to make friends and to 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 run out and speak to people and to fall and laugh and if if these are the things i i i was scared of these are the things that i i did not invest myself in in my life then i feel um that's my idea of failure and that translates into everything so if i'm making a film and i didn't understand what my director feels i didn't understand what he was going through or she was going through and what she or he was was trying to explain or what the 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 view of life is or love is or uh, uh so i feel i feel that, that movie because i i didn't understand or empathize with the people i was making the movie with the movie might be good or bad that's not what my failure is my failure is those artists you were working with did you create something together mm. or did you create something isolated in pockets with your idea of the world bracketed um isolated from each other and that's failure failure is not empathizing with each other failure is me not you know uh, 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 understanding where another person in front of me um uh, what they are composed of that's failure is is the inability to see yourself in others is failure or to see others in you and for me that's failure and that's boring and life would be terrible if i wanted to do that wouldn't speak to you guys that's the reason i would love to i'm going to learn something i'm speaking to you guys i'm i'm so happy you know harris so harris is your nina so shan is your rithik is your and and i'm so happy that they're listening i'm like wondering what they're thinking and this is exhausting but this is like um relating to each other us monkeys we're monkeys right we're we're not um we're not uh, what lions aren't solitary i'm thinking of a solitary animal we're not that hmm. been evolved from for the past 100 million years from uh, uh you know this mammal to this and we are a community creature and our sense of failure is failing to find that sense of community failing to help the community failing to have the community help us this is the feeling of our got it um and i've been told to rush to the rapid fire where i really have one more question can i please ask you please puchho yaar okay okay wait i sorry okay so um so okay so the, the question is essentially what do you think is the job of an actor in society and that question came from me thinking about like if you think of a doctor it is to heal people if you think of a lawyer it is to do vakalat um if you think of uh, a, a, a cop it is to enforce the law according to you what is the job or the purpose of an actor in society and do you have one for yourself if you figure it out it's a loaded question but No, it's 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 a good question, and um, I asked this question to many people in my life. I'm going to elongate the answer from uh, Concordia University, my acting professors, to Nasiruddin Shah, the Home Minister, to many people. But only one person gave me a reply. That was my acting professor from uh, Actor Studio in Los Angeles, uh, Rob Rees, and he said to me, um, he said an actor's task. is to express the human condition in all its forms that's it and uh, that's basically it that's my job is to express our condition in all its different forms and that could be different people different places uh, different genders it could be absolutely anything in, in all our forms and all our colors and that's my job yeah fair enough okay and uh, last question so this is just personally for me and for i imagine everyone here um we are all 20 around there and uh, so sort of at a crossroads of our life we have to figure out what we have to do and this is a big generalization but there's two roads there's one of like passion there's one of practicality right now i feel just personally if i'm just going to talk about my one sample size that 
practicality sort of always outweighs the passion. If I like, I am being told to do a data science degree because I have to make a set amount of money later on in life. Um, and then I feel like I never hear from the people who sort of just did what they liked, and and I always wonder, or well, I see you as a person who did what you liked. You followed your passion in the sense that you are an actor. So now my question is like, how is life? right now is it full of existential dread or are you fine or is it just going um because from my friends and like my view if i follow like the the knowledge is if you follow practicality then you're fine you're set in life so you, you'll get money you'll be fine so my question mm-hmm. is how are you right now um i could be better okay. i am now working more on myself i wasn't no amount of doing what you love uh can help you with working on yourself hmm. uh you could be doing what makes you very very happy but be very very sad and very broken and very distant and so with time i realized that these are two different areas completely uh, what doing what i love um is a, a very external blessing it's sort of superficial but almost um um it will feed your stomach it is only good for feeding your stomach most of the time um very rarely um is doing what you love fulfilling for you as a whole in a complete form in the way that you feel when uh, you receive love or you give love these are two very different things that's that's completion and happiness you're not going to find that with some vocation mm. no matter what the vocation is it is a vocation even if you love creating poetry um and it is your life you can write the most coherent amazing um structured lack of structured words down feel proud feel happy feel wonderment yet 5 minutes later feel completely disheveled feel completely alone um these are two different areas to work in and so i would tell you that yes do what you love but love yourself more man um yes. uh, love yourself more than what you do uh much more you know i'm i like acting and cinema but they're not the end game um i'm not an actor i'm not this bollywood i'm not you know shashank arora i'm not i'm a son and i'm a uh, i'm a, you know a brother and you know i'm i'm these things i'm somebody who likes to just you know just sit alone and look up at the stars so these are the things hold these things close to you you are not your job no matter how good you do it stephen hawking wasn't uh of physicist stephen hawking was a lover first um mm. uh he, he was a great great friend first um uh, you know and so in his head he you know he understood that these are two different things and his sense of of joy and happiness didn't depend on what he did and so even if you love what you do and even if you don't you're doing something you don't love doing it's okay because your sense of completion will never depend on what you do as a job no matter how or badly you do it it will not it will fulfill a purpose in your day it will fulfill uh, a sense of um um well it's validation to a certain extent it's it's telling yourself i created this thing i exist it's affirming your existence it's doing many many things but it's not the end game it's not what life is about life is not about that you know you Marlon Brando and I don't always like using his references. He went through life and he acted and everything. He's one of the best actors that is. And by the end of he he left acting, and uh, because he started realizing that he, being somebody who worked, you know, in films all these years, uh, uh, he when he finally started voicing, he when Marlon Brando won an Oscar, he called someone from the Red Indian community. on the stage uh, to accept his oscar on on behalf of him uh, that was say perhaps his beginning to realize that that job was in him that there was much more to him than his job uh, and so you know essentially that is the most important thing to realize is that you are love you're not doing what you love you have to love yourself and know that you're so special at every single one person is magic you know we are gods and i think that's what the essence of all religion should be uh, i don't know we lost that is that you're all gods every single person here you have the power to create and kill and 
and do everything. And so treat yourself like a god. Because only then can you see God in other people, right? You can then you can respect and empathize with other people, right? And that puts aside all these worries, what am I doing? Will that give me a sense of completion? No, your sense of completion will not come from that. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. We're going to move to the rapid fire and then we will uh -huh. take audience questions. It is 9 p.m. Um, but are, are you good to stay for like another 15? I'm good. I'm, I'm, good. Okay. I'm good. Awesome. I'm good. Okay. We're going to do a quick rapid fire. Okay. <clears throat> so, who is a person that you've never met but has defined your life? Has defined my life? Anthony Gaudi, the architect from Spain. Um, incredible um, parts of it. Uh, my great grandfather never met him, but I'm sure he's defining my life. Yeah. Okay. Favorite historical place? Favorite historical place? Yes. Oh man, there are so many. Uh, yeah. From the Chechen Itza Pyramid to Lodi Gardens to uh, just to to many, every country, every geograph you know geographical location on this planet has one of it. I mean, I can't possibly think. Um, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Do you have a favorite plant? I do. Uh, it's the, it's this flower um, called the night sky petunia. I really like it. It looks like the universe on a flower. It's fantastic, man. Okay. It's, it's incredible looking. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, if you could be any other species than a human, what would you be? I would love to be a dolphin. Um, mm. Dolphins seem fairly complex and intelligent beings like us. And uh, so let's yeah. be fun. Yeah. Do you have a favorite quote or or a shairi or a dialogue? No, I don't. Okay. Fair enough. Do you, do you have a favorite podcast? By what? What's your what's A podcast. A po do I listen to podcasts? Do you have a favorite sure. podcast? Do I have a favorite podcast? No, I don't have a favorite podcast. Um, uh, my podcasts are mostly political and sometimes uh, they're just musicians being interviewed. Uh, so, I mean, that's my favorite genre of podcasts is self-help music. Um, people just, you know, logging in their day and talking about what they're going through. And uh, yeah, that's the sort of things that I listen to. And Harry Potter stories and podcasts. That's always fun. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. 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 Um, what's the most fun hat on a set, on a movie set? Fun hat on a movie set. Uh, would be the DPs. We we mean the, the the you know the person you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It would be the cinematographer. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Your favorite planet. My favorite planet Earth, man. Earth. Yeah, 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 it has to be. Is there a book that changed your life? There's many many books that changed my life. Um, Time Within Time by Andrei Tarkovsky. Frame uh, Chan stories. Alice in Wonderland, uh, when I was, yeah, many, 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 many of these stories put together. Okay. And last one, if you are put in front of your 20-year-old self and you can say one thing to this person, what would you say? I'd say, I'd say just love yourself more. Love yourself so much, uh, so much, so much, so much, but don't take yourself seriously. Yeah. Got it. And um, so this is just the last thing before we have audience questions. Are there any future projects that you're excited about and you want to talk? I'm, yeah, I'm not going to plug in my work. There's a film <laughs> by the Bhaskar Banerjee, man. It's called Tease. It should be on Netflix sometime next year. Um, I think it's it's the toughest job I ever had to do so far. Mm. So hopefully I haven't completely fucked it up. Um, yeah, I'm sure you haven't. Okay, so um, I think we can take audience questions now for like 10 minutes or how many other? Whoever has audience questions, I don't know how we're doing this. Okay. Yeah, if I, yeah. Abish Anyone does unmute yourselves and speak now. Yeah, yes, okay. people Can just raise your hands. People raise your hands and uh, I will unmute you. Yeah. So, Abhishek, Krishna, I... you go first. 
Okay, so first of all, that was very interesting. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Um, my my question was more about like the specifics of um, the general film industry because I grew up in the U.S. and mm -hmm. for us, like there, there's like people focus on Hollywood, right? But there's an entire acting industry beyond that. In fact, most of the acting industry is outside of Hollywood. Um, so, like in for example, in the Indian context, how is it? How is the general progression into becoming an actor in any capacity? Do you do uh, a lot of indie film work? Do you do theater productions? Like, how is the general like progression? General progression in India is uh, you come to Bombay, and uh, you have these uh, pockets in the city where they conduct auditions, and uh, you just stand in line. And uh, you give audition and after audition after audition and day after day after day till it sort of begins to weigh you down and becomes exhausting because the system is is not transparent. There is no system. Uh, there isn't a structure to the system. There is, there aren't agencies out there which are looking for you. Uh, uh, it's 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 very sporadic. So it's half hazard. Um, um, so you know in Bombay the way is you spend enough time to get to know enough people who are casting or to get to know enough filmmakers, you study enough acting and you hope uh, at the right time, the right place, you're at the right audition. Um, I wish the system was more transparent. I wish, uh, you know, uh, casting calls were being distributed in a more orderly manner, but it isn't there. So anyone who's coming to Bombay, you just have to sort of figure out, um, or anyone who wants to act in India, you have to sort of figure out, uh, um, literally these neighborhoods where you can go and, and, and test and do screen tests or uh, these workshops which you can attend and then get an idea of how the city is functioning. Um, so that's that's a bit of what's happening here. But it's essential to study and prepare acting before you come and throw yourself here. Um, because it can be very um, chaotic and it can be disheartening to see uh, this chaos. So within you know within yourself, you must have that order first, uh, or that sense of what you want to do. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Uh, Himanshi. I, I don't mean to dishearten anyone at all. I mean, you study and come to Bombay, and you know, you throwing yourself here is not the worst thing to do. Sorry for cutting you down. Yeah. Yeah. Himanshi, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Hi, Shashank. Hi, Tanya. It was a really good session. I'm Himanshi and I'm from Bombay, but I study at Johns Hopkins University. So I've joined in all the way from the East Coast and this session has been really, really profound. And I have two questions. So I'll ask my first question. Um, so, you know, you spoke about so many things and it was very fascinating. And even though Tanya asked the question about like practicality over like, you know, what you want, like your passion, I have a question sort of similar to that, but different, which is that, so I'm doing chemical engineering at Hopkins and, you know, it can get really tiring sometimes doing an engineering degree in general. And I have been really creative and I have followed a lot of your work and, you know, in general, like into cinema and, you know, analyzing these things and finding out, you know, deep meanings and something that probably isn't even that deep. But my question is, how do you, like at this stage, wherein you're in the middle of your degree and you don't have that kind of time, how do you try and get involved in something creative? Because I feel like by every passing day, the amount of creativity that I had is just like going down because you just have to, you have, you have so much to do and you're like so busy. You don't have the time to sit down and, you know, just do the things you used to do before, like make some stupid like videos, you know, using like the, you know what I'm talking about, like those Apple animation things, you know, you're making birthday videos for your friends in lockdown. None of that exists anymore because everybody's so busy and you have to do something. And yeah, I just wanted to know your perspective on how you can still like be creative because I, I mean, I'm sure it's there in me still, but you know, I'm just not being able to find the time. And how do you like get started with something like that? I mean, that's, you know, essentially just uh, if there's activities you don't have time for, uh, then you make your approach towards the things that are already doing more creative. So if I can't uh, find room to create a song, uh, I can find a way to be more creative in whatever field that I am participating in. I can be, um, you know, creative with little things. And, and creativity is such a broad 
uh, I don't know what you mean by do you mean painting, do you mean making films, do you mean cooking? All these things are creative fields. And so creativity is not so much in the act of creating something as it is an approach. The way you approach something is what makes it creative. Um, making a cup and making a cup with you know, uh, uh, a mosaic design, uh, um, it's the approach that makes it creative. So I just say, if, you know, find five minutes in your day and find 10 minutes in your day to sit down and write five words uh, and start it from there. I mean, you're never going to get time to be creative. It's, you're only going to get busier from now in your life. And like you said, which is very true, um, and musicians will agree to that, creativity does subside in us as we grow older. Why that happens is when we're children, uh, we have something called suspension of disbelief. Suspension of disbelief is essential to actors. Suspension of disbelief is essential to any artist. What that means is um, you suspend your disbelief in something to invest yourself in it. And that's what creativity is essentially. Uh, um, so keep that sense of childish play alive is, is, is our job uh, as a creative person. And it's going to be hard for you. So find little activities. I mean, find something if you, you love doing. I mean, I, I love putting stickers. I love making little uh, friendship bands. I'm so sorry. Give me a second, guys. Give me one second. Of course. <laughs> Right, so creativity is something which is in your approach to everything. And so um, um, try and, and listen to that song. And I'm sorry you feel like you don't have enough time, but all, all I can say is that it doesn't take much time to be creative. It takes very little time in your day, it takes a minute or two minutes. And uh, just invest yourself in something. Okay, thank you so much. And my second question um, mm -hmm. is like, I'm like a massive fan of your work. My favorite movie, yours is Titli. And obviously, Made in Heaven was amazing, right? Like the whole Kabir character and the like how he evolved as a human being. And it was insane, okay? So all of that is great. And you also said that, like, I think Tanya asked a question. You were like, I'm not a character. I'm Shashank at the end of the day, right? And I feel like your approach to all of the questions that Tanya was asking, even the questions that we guys are asking is so so you know like raw and it's so profound and even right now like you spoke about some 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 suspension of disbelief it's like you're a psychologist you're a philosopher it's insane like you're just being so chill effortlessly so i want to ask you how you do it i had good teachers man <laughs> i had good people who taught me um, uh -huh. my high school principal abba adams she was an amazing woman uh, she made me want to act as music teachers amazing mm -hmm. i had a great history professor who told me you know, in class nine mm -hmm. we were reading something about the british in india in 1913 he said remember this is written by some human being i said what do you mean he said this isn't history it's someone's perception of history mm -hmm. i'm very lucky to have all these people in my life i'm very humbled thank you for saying that you like my work and um, I, I feel blessed that I was equipped to sort of uh, tackle it by my acting professor and by my mother and my father, who are very sensitive uh, and vulnerable people. And they taught me to be sensitive. And I think sens being sensitive is the only thing I have going for me is that I'm sensitive and I break down. And I cry a lot sometimes. And I, uh, you know, I, 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 it's, it's not volatile, but it's just letting things affect you. So I let things affect me. Uh, you know, what's happening in Iran right now, you know, what's, mm -hmm. what's happening in, you know, Julian Assange is, 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 is in not being allowed, you know, a sense of freedom and, and the United States is, is going to have him shipped back there. Um, mm -hmm. In India, we're not even letting journalists go to receive their prize for um, being outspoken. And we're like, no, 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 you can't. We've blocked them and barred them from going and getting their prize. Yeah. Uh, in the United States for a photograph in Kashmir and we call ourselves a country which um, uh, is democratic. Um, we have, we forced girls to, to, to not wear the burqa in a school in South India. Uh, we forced women to wear burqas in Iran. It's the yeah. other way. It's like, uh, you know, so 
I was taught to look at the world around me, and that affected me so much because the world around me is so it, it's so vividly diverse. How can it not affect you? And I think these are the things you're talking about. I don't consider myself a psychologist, and I never have, or a scientist. I wish I could. Uh, this is just how I understand the world. Uh, this is just how I try to understand the world, and 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 I'm really glad to you know you're here and asking these questions. Man. I'm really glad to see you guys. Thank you so much. I'm very excited for this. So oh, sweet. I hope you like it. I hope they Thank release it as Netflix, man. <laughs> Thank you, Manchi. Ashley, do you want to go next? Hi. Yes, I can go next. Can you hear me? All right. I have one. Yeah. Great, thank you, Shashank, so much. My name is uh, Ashley. Thank you so much for speaking today. I really appreciate it. I also really appreciate the sort of openness and genuine thoughtfulness that we can see uh, in your answers. So thank you very much. Uh, I also have two questions. If we do have time for that, I'll try to make them quick. Um, so first, uh, in the conversation about method acting, you were talking about how in the development of the character, you kind of are the character when you're performing. And I wonder, to a certain degree, the inverse is true, that you start to feel like the character is you. And what I mean is, you know, is there a sense of possessiveness that if you spend months developing this character, learning about who this person is, having them surprise you sometimes, that if somebody came back and said, you know, actually, we're gonna remake this film in 10 years, we're gonna recast the character, would there be a little bit of, no, that's, that's, that's mine, that's, that's me. So weird, so I, you know, I don't know if, I didn't miscommunicate, but so I, I don't believe that we can be the character, but like I said, the character is always you. So if 10 years later, you were to play the same character, um, it would have evolved because you evolved because you changed as a human being uh, in 10 years. So that character would be dramatically different in 10 years. If I were to play Brahman Naman in five years, it would be very, very different. Uh, and of course, you carry all of them around with you. And I, this means you're bipolar or schizophrenic. Um, all those characters, they come from a part of you. Um, the child in me, my inner child, uh, you know, the lover in me, the father in me, the brother in me. And these are all, these are sub-personalities which every human being possesses. Um, right now, um, um, you know, um, Tanya is quiet, but she's, you know, she has a family and she's thinking about uh, her siblings and she's thinking about work and she's thinking about this particular thing and how she has to behave in a particular way. These are all parts of her. Uh, and so these aren't characters she's playing. This is just her in her different colors, right? And so look at, look at characters in the same way. They're not different people I become uh, at all. They're not different people or different uh, 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 human beings. They're just sub-personalities of me. So they are but a derivative of what I am. They are a reduction of what I am. They are but a fragment of what I am. And so um, you carry them till the day you die. You carry them with you till the day you die. If you did it honestly, if you played something honestly, it will stay with you because it came from you. It was you. Uh, you didn't become Titli. You didn't become Kabir. Uh, uh, Kabir came from but a portion of you. Okay, okay, I see. Right. Yeah, yeah. okay, okay, I see. I think I understand what your answer was better. Uh, and my second question quickly is, do you have some favorite characteristics in co-actors and who have been some of your favorite actors you've shared a scene with? Sweet. My favorite characteristic is a co-actor who listens, man. Um, is, is who listens and, and, and uh, who, who, who acknowledges how you feel um, and who lets you feel the way you feel. I think that's the you know characteristic of a good person and a good actor um, is somebody who's empathetic. Um, and uh, the, the, what was the second part of your question? Sorry. Um, and and who have you worked with that you felt that with? Who oh, read? Right. Oh man, uh, I've had the chance to work with the coolest people in the world. Um, blessing learned from all of them. Irfan Khan was one of my favorite people to work with because that man is like a song. Um, that man is like the most beautiful song. Um, um, Om Buri, I had a chance to rehearse with him. Nasiruddin Shah is in peace. Um, he plays my butler. And it's the most incredibly awe-inspiring feeling in the world, learning from someone like that. Um, and 
uh, having that relationship or that equation with him. Um, Golshifte Farhani, she is a force of nature. She's an Iranian actor and she is... Uh, you notice how I didn't say actress. Um, um, yeah, we should never say actress, you know. There's no such thing as a doctress, guys. <laughs> you know, it's a doctor. All right, so, and, so I'm just saying that. Uh, so yeah, Golshifte Farhani, she is... One of the most incredible souls I ever got to to meet in my life, um, and I and the more I see her now and what she's doing and what's happening in Iran, I realize no more. Uh, Nawazuddin Siddiqui is is a funny guy, great to learn from him. There's wonderful, wonderful actors I've had the pleasure of working with in this life. Uh, wonderful directors, Nandita Das, and all of them affected me. Man. All of them. I met Ryan Gosling once, and I had such a big crush on him. Even he affected me. Uh, you know, if I you know if I was uh, yeah. If I was here, I was totally getting in my lost but yeah, there's many, many people. Okay, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, Bhakti, did you just want to ask your question quickly? Yes. Do you want to get done with your question now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been writing ask. so many questions, but I have one or two. I I won't ask more. So, as an artist, <laughs> no, you you this. Right. no yeah, please so. ask. Please ask. Don't let me. <laughs> So, as an artist, do you feel uh, different mm -hmm. from star kids and outsider? Being an outsider, like when we start our career, mm -hmm. as a singer, I wanted to start my career into singing, but uh, my dad told me there's a lot of competition, and whosoever is not that expert in studies, they goes into. So yeah, how was your journey? How was my journey? So do you feel, uh, the first thing you asked was interesting about the start. Do I feel any different than Star Studio? Or what was the question, exact question? Yeah, do you feel different from Star Kids? How opportunity they get? They get a uh, lot of opportunity and a uh, lot of uh, directors are supporting, production, uh, mm -hmm. producers are supporting. But being an outsider, mm -hmm. so many uh, actresses, artists, as I said, they all are artists. I don't say actors and actresses. They all are artists. So they feel mm -hmm. those kind of problems and those are uh, like, nobody's talking about that. You are so real. Whenever you talk, I feel like, yeah, you really, you are talking and this is the truth. So tell me. Okay. So there's two answers to this here. Yeah. Uh, I understand um, your question just a bit. Um, there's two answers to this. If I'm working in uh, a sweet shop, I make laddus. Okay, I'm, I'm, I make jalebis. Now my son or my daughter, she's grown up watching me make jalebis. Okay. She will obviously know what it takes to make a jalebi more than the boy who grew up in, or a girl who grew up in, uh, you know, the shop across the road where there was cloth, sariyan bikri thi, and uh, they were in a sari shop. So, of course, the jalebi man's child will know how to make jalebis uh, slightly more efficiently or know more about the process of making jalebis. That's the only difference within a star kid and a person who's not uh, from a family which has been a part of cinema, is that they are aware of the process, the business process of it, much earlier than I am. So if you're born to an actor, you're aware of what you know a PR team does. You're aware of what a set is. Of you're aware of uh, many things which I needed to study. So that is one difference. Uh, uh, otherwise, there isn't much. You still need to put in the same amount of work, irrespective, uh, to sort of let your work be loved. It takes the same amount of effort or study. Then the other answer is yes. I feel like any other child who wanted to uh, uh, play, I feel like, hey, I'm not getting as much chance to play on this field because this field is owned by your fathers or your mothers. Yeah. And so please let me play on this football field also. I understand you're already playing. Um, and I understand the joy of soccer game is already going and you know how to play soccer. But can I also please have a place on this field? Can I also please play with this ball? Uh, I feel like that sometimes. I feel, I feel unhappy uh, that uh, 
people complain about nepotism as well uh because i have been in this you know doing this for 8 years and i i felt hurt many times but i don't remember ever lashing out at life as a whole and being like hey nepotistic nepotism exists am i not because that's not how it is if i'm born to the sweet owner i didn't choose to be born to the sweet owner i didn't choose that i i i know how to make sweets because my father and my mother make them really well so i don't need your hate so i don't believe in hating on people i believe in voicing yourself but i i'm voicing the injustice and i believe in asking for my place to play on that football field because i'm aware ki kisi aur ka football field hai uh Got that's the only i didn't mean to interrupt you in between but no, please you didn't yeah. interrupt it's a conversation let's speak to each other and so that's the only thing that's the only difference uh between the start do you have any plans to write your own novel because you are a writer i i i couldn't possibly write a novel yet mere se nahi hoga my father is not ready i can write scripts I can write so have you done studies like um, writing? I did in Concordia University. I studied writing for cinema. In uh, Whistling Woods as well, I studied uh, screenplay uh, writing, which is for cinema again. Uh, so I have, but a novel takes a different person only. I'm, I I I like to appreciate your acting skills first because whenever you act, you act like you are doing it really. we feel like it's a real story or not that's so yeah. <laughs> yes and i really love your acting it doesn't matter how much you are get, uh, getting bollywood movies or not but your acting skills will prove everything no other platform needs anything like no the nobody needs anything so it will people will see it that's really kind of you to say and thank you and i think art is a medium which enables and empowers everyone to do that and i think that's art now it's it's so wonderful it doesn't matter who's made this painting or it or it doesn't matter where it's hanging it could be hanging in the louvre this painting could be hanging in by metro or uh, delhi metro but it'll have the same effect on us so i understand what you're saying and i think that's the power of art it's it doesn't matter the medium it, it, it doesn't matter uh, uh you know the selling force behind it sometimes it just catches on because it's real and sometimes it catches on because we love it and we're empathetic and thank you for saying that and being empathetic towards my work um yeah. so i feel peace whenever i see you God thank bless you this thing that is so sweet okay yes. thank you bhakti um teji do you want to ask your question uh yeah sure So Shashank, thank you so much for giving your time, and I'm sorry you have to like wait so much. No, so, dude, I mean I'm here. Yeah. There is no hurry up in this, but yeah, we're just talking. And, and all right, all right. So yeah. I have like two questions, and I think like a lot has been said on this like practicality versus passion topic. But like just the first question is about that. Like a person is usually expected to right study in school, then go to college, get a job, or start a business, right? And like there are other external forces too. Your parents they make you do that. They make they want. So you want to earn money, your parents want you to earn money. But like somewhere there, like one person has everybody. A child wants to be an astronaut. Like most childs want to be an astronaut. Yeah, I want to be that. Some of them want to be an actor. As a child, even I wanted to be an actor. Okay, like I think till the tenth grade, I wanted to be an actor. Maybe right now, I think some part of me wants. Okay. But after a while, you know, the practicality starts to kick in. You're in your eleventh grade. You have to you know, choose your subjects. You have to go to college, and mm-hmm. you know, somewhere around the line. I mean that passion you have, the dream you have, that's lost. And because we believe that jobs and businesses they're like safe things, that's not true. Like business always has risk. Jobs also like uh, the recession is almost there. A lot of people might lose jobs. But in acting, I believe the recession is always there. Like mm-hmm. there's so much uncertainty. You don't know what's gonna happen next. So like, what made you go this path? What made you go like down the path of acting, not like a normal stereotypical job or business? Like what is the driving force behind it? Of course, you love acting, you love music, you're a very creative person. But there must be like something that you know said to you that yeah, I'm going to do this and not what other people do. So I got very interested with editing when I was uh, fourteen, fifteen. I was very interested with uh, putting one image after another image, putting mm-hmm. music and sound to that. And I, I started realizing that it completely changes. the being state 
what I'm feeling or the person who's watching it, they're feeling. And I got more interested in assembling those visuals one after the other and then changing their uh, assembly and putting the last visual in the book and seeing how that differently affects. So I didn't really want to be an actor. Um, I wanted to be a director and a storyteller when I was very young. Mm-hmm. And I started off with that love. I, 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 I love the assembly of audio and visual, if that makes sense. Uh, and so that is something that pushed me forward and forward. And I realized, hey, I, I, love, I love creating stories. Um, and practically, like you're saying, um, I disagree with one thing. On I think it's as hard to become a physicist as it is an actor. I think yeah. it's as volatile to be uh, a biochemist. I have a friend who's a biochemist in in in, in Portland, Oregon, and he's 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 finished his PhD now. Um, he's my age, um, and man, is it volatile? Um, yeah, it's so volatile. I'm like, देखो किसी ने बोला था कि एक्टिंग की तरह जो तू करने वाला है इट्स 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 यू जस्ट पिक समथिंग एंड यू गो विद इट मैन यू पिक समथिंग दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ फुलफिल्स यू यू पिक समथिंग दैट यू लाइक आई लव 10 थिंग्स लाइक सो व्हेन एम समवन आस्क मी व्हाई डिड यू बिकम एन एक्टर आई एम लाइक बिकॉज़ दिस इज व्हाट आई एंडेड अप बीइंग फर्स्ट आई एम गोइंग टू बिकम अ शेफ नाउ आई हैव टू लर्न फिजिक्स इन द सेंस दैट आई हैव टू टू वांट टू डू अ मास्टर्स इन फिजिक्स सो दीस ऑल थिंग्स आई आई प्लान टू डू व्हेन आई did this one first cuz practically it worked um it worked in the sense of i realized that i could make a job as a theater assistant in concordia they were paying me 10 bucks an hour uh, way back in 2007 and uh, i was getting paid to translate uh, french into hindi in a, on a megaphone in college you know so wo practically somehow it it, it worked and all these things they fell together and so i was like, okay i will go for this part but if i got a job in a lab Uh, uh and i would have really loved it and i would have been assisting my uh, you know physics professor i would have gone down that path yeah but like what made you go to bombay like that's a big decision but like so what go to bombay was, was that uh, money was getting over i had studied cinema uh, la was very intimidating uh, to get a job as an actor i sent in auditions for the show called entourage uh, for a show called uh, oh yeah yeah big man exactly. theory for a show called i remember sending in auditions for these shows and i remember uh looking at the other actors in line with me and they were so much better they were so good they were so good and i was like yaar how are they so good um and i didn't i wasn't getting jobs and my money was running over and you know um uh, my father was like hey, i have supported you for this much time in college but i need you to get a job now uh and the only thing i could get a job in was film and so i decided that I'd move to Bombay because it was much easier for me to get a job in film in Bombay than it was in yeah. Los Angeles. Uh even though Los Angeles was making more of the cinema I wanted to uh, participate. Yeah. So that's why I ended up moving to Bombay by the money got over that was the only path. The Siruddin Shah I spoke to and he said, "Hey, I'm also teaching acting. Um um so please come study." There were all these things happening and, and so I ended up moving to Bombay uh, because of of them you know, because life pushed me in that direction. um and that's how it happened how it sort of came together yeah but like you said you spent four years like trying auditioning and, and it happens always but like usually people they have a set timeline in mind that one year hota hai to hota hai nahi to yaar chhod lenge or then i'll try like a job or something but you tried right. four years and really was there a rock bottom a point that you had rock bottom and then a turning point that no no i have to do it something that changed you so you think the four years of bombay mein jo the yeah um by that time i was already so clear uh about what my job as an actor was mm-hmm. that i didn't question whether it would happen or not oh um so it's like i you know it's like now i'm like this is what i do you know it's just it's it's like sometimes when you have clarity about hey you know uh how you cook like i know how to make uh chola chawal i make safed chola okay yeah. now i know how to make chola chawal really 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 well um to a point where i, I know garam masala la 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 this mm-hmm. star and this la you stop questioning whether um 
you're going to get to cook chola tomorrow or whether the person who's eating your chola will like it because you yeah. have such a articulate approach to creating what you're creating you're busy in creating it you're invested in creating this chola and making the chola you stop questioning all these things yeah it's like if i'm focusing on what i need to create in a scene uh, for my character i stop questioning how my hair is looking i stop questioning how i'm looking whether my face is oily where my hand is hey, what what should i be doing you stop questioning all these things when you know how your character is feeling life is simple yeah. be aware of how you're feeling and you're not going to be able questioning all these things you're not going to be questioning the next you're going to go take it moment by moment much like a mental health step by step small yeah. goal small goal today what is my goal today what laugh today i'm going to meet friend today i'm going to create this thing today i'm going to feel better about this today i'm going to listen to a song i treat life in the same way man otherwise bahut exhausting correct agar aage ka sochu na ki ye ho raha tha this happen aaj kya karunga niche you know niche ko no one knows man Uh, Plato yeah. didn't know. Uh, Plato writes in the Republic that I have no fucking idea what's going to happen in two thousand years. I'm telling you how things yeah. happen now, how democracy is going to unfold. But I yeah. don't know how democracy is going to be taken forward. And look, two thousand years later, he was right. He had no idea what the hell is going to happen. Yeah. Here we are. And so, me pata bhai. Ten years we will live. Twenty years we will live. Me ko kya pata? My acting. Ke saath kya hoga? I can just enjoy it. Correct. Right. And so that's just how I take it. And and yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Ishaan. Thanks, my boy. Thank you for asking me. Thanks, Teji, Gautam. Uh, hi, Ishaan. Thank you so much for that talk. And uh, I just wanted to know your uh, brief opinion on the relationship between politics and art. And is being a political uh, a choice that an actor can prescribe to, or is having political opinions, or just being politically aware about your country in today's time and age, especially in India? an important uh, choice for bringing out uh, the true art or like your most honest honest art from within you your character can be lack you know have a lack of politics or be very political but you as an artist even if as a human being uh, you choose to be ignorant enough to stay out of politics that's privilege uh if we are not political now we're privileged if you can afford not to be political or involved in politics you're very privileged uh as a human being matlab your life is going extremely beautifully transiently and really well that you don't have to bother about what's happening across the road from you uh and that's obscenely arrogant so an artist an engineer um a doctor all of us have to be very politically aware we do not have to be passionate about politics we do not have to be passionate about a certain political party you have to be very 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 aware of what politics is you have to be very aware of what the people around you are going through and that is politics what is politics is the study of well i mean you guys will of course tell me in, in much clearer way but it's essentially the study of of what my species is going through isn't that what politics is essentially how we deal with each other how we govern ourselves how we organize ourselves that's politics it's how we communicate to each other and if i'm not aware of that as an actor as a person who is representing human beings then i can't do a very good job i don't have to be pa- passionate about the democrats or the republicans but i have to be aware of what is good and bad i have to be aware that storming the white house is not correct i have to be aware that killing a black man with your knee is not correct i have to understand the political repercussions that lead to a riot in delhi that lead to uh, muslims being murdered in my country i have to understand what is giving birth to this um because if not then my character is lacking all the layers then the character will not have on the fun if i as a human being don't bring these complexities into my world in cinema so we have to be politically aware but we don't have to pick a side you don't have to pick a side as an actor you don't have to be like ye achha ye bura hai you have to know it you have to know it otherwise there is no point in being an artist there is no point in being a cosmonaut or an astronaut uh, if you don't understand the political rep- repercussions of what you are doing to this world that you're going to moon and moon cannot be 
geographically or politically divided for America and Russia and China, and India. We cannot have resources being auctioned off for cap, you know, for companies. We can't do that. You have to be aware as an astronaut. That doesn't mean that makes you a bad astronaut if you're not aware of that. But what good is it being an astronaut if you're not aware? What good is it just, you know, what good is it? it, it it's no good. You didn't relate to the world. You didn't experience the world. And like I said, that's the failure. A failure is not knowing what the people in front of you are going through. The failure is not knowing what we were all going through. And so if we're not politically aware, we don't know what we're going through. And so as anybody we have, to, even a great chef has to be politically aware. Otherwise, you know, the food's not going to be great. Right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Vail. Thank you for asking me. Right. Um, I'm seeing no more questions. So I think that we can call it a night or call it a... But we have one last thing. <laughs> yes. It's related to Gautam's question. Um, do you feel afraid sometimes if you talk about politics? As I'm saying in India, I know we, can't, yeah. we cannot speak publicly or on a political view, we cannot talk in public. So you yeah. have that authority, uh, people listen to you. So do you feel ever will you speak in public about the political issues or whatever? How humans are treating other humans, that is also a point. I try every day, Bhakti. I, I try. I try to whenever I can. Um, of course, I'm scared, man. I have a family. And, uh, I want to live, I don't want to die, right? Um, I'm scared that the people around me in my discomfort will further be aggravated and I'm not in a position of absolute any control where I can stop a whole planet from acting the way it is. What I can do is change one person at a time have one discussion at a time. So it's terrifying. Uh, it's terrifying that as a whole, I, I cannot have an immediate effect, but the effect that I have is, is, is dependent on time, is dependent on all of us. So it's terrifying that miscommunication, it's terrifying that there are people on this planet which hate other religions, which hate uh, uh, other sexual preferences, which hate of people who are of different color, of gender, so, women, you know. So I, I can't voice these things because there is a sizable amount of people who are doing the hating. And those people are terrifying people. They're terrifying people. And they have no love for life. So they will sort of seek to destroy everything in their path. And so I think it's essential to talk. Anji. Whatever you can do is only spread good things from your and you cannot expect anything from anybody, right? Right. Completely. You cannot expect anything from there anybody. There will be a... Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So I'm so sorry. No, no. Your, yes, no. You're correct. You can't expect anything from anyone. All you can do is be that change, right? And it sounds cliche, but you change yourself. You you find the biases within yourself and be like, no, I'm treating this person in a way I would not like to be treated. No, I'm feeling the sense of aggravation when I wouldn't like it against me. So you have to sort of start changing yourself and then the people around you begin to be affected by you. If they are not changing, walk out. Simple, right? If they're not changing, well, yes, you have a certain responsibility to take care of yourself. Um, but you do have a certain responsibility for this whole planet as well. Uh, so yeah, if they're not changing, you try a different way. If they're not changing, you try a different way. If they are hurting you, you leave. If they're hurting uh, those around them, you leave because life is short and we don't have enough time. If I had a thousand years, I would not leave even then. I would sit and I would listen and I would understand why they feel like hurting someone else. Uh, nobody is born hating. Everybody is born with a sense of community, right? And so we acquire this hate as we grow. So it can be unacquired also. It's very easy to, to change uh, the way people think. It's very easy to change the way we think. And so I hope uh, uh, that it is possible. I hope that it is possible to do that. 
I wish this call never ends. <laughs> oh, you Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you so much. All Thank right. You. Awesome. Uh, Shashank, thank you so much. It, this was so long and we took so much of your time, but thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Shashank. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Save the world and go out there and spread love with your friends. I know it's hard, uh, but just do it, man. You guys are magic. You guys are gods. You guys are everything. Like, you know, just you're made of stars, man. So just go change everything you can. Just and love yourself. And I know it's focus on your mental health and remind yourself that you're not alone. Remind yourself you're so loved. And every moment of it, just just be hopeful, yeah. And just you know work towards small joys. Life is chaotic. Social media, everything these days is so much chaos. We're like, why are we living in this world? Everything is burning. Coronavirus came. You guys must have dealt with the toughest two years. Uh, just be there for each other and stuff. And life is really short, like really, really short, man. Really short. Like the one thing is we don't have enough time. I promise you that shouldn't stress you out. It should make you love each other more. That's nothing to make you more anxious. Um, work on your anxiety every day. That's something that builds up with time. And and work on just loving each other, man. And and, and be nice to each other, man. And that's just all it does. That's all. Yeah. yeah so Thank you for having me, man. Thank, thank you for the invite and stuff. Thank you, of course. Thank you, um, thank you very much. All right. Berkeley students, everyone, pleasure. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, have a good evening, guys. Bye.